Hi, it's Donna. I'm one of the artists from Delu Designs Australia and today we're doing a masked acrylic swipe of an Arabian horse, um, a flea bitten grey. I'm re recycling one of my old canvases which I've had for quite some time, years actually, um, and it was about time that this poor old canvas had a new lease of life. So here I am just covering the canvas just with a um, black acrylic household paint. Nothing special about it, it's just been watered down um, and it's just so that I can have a blank canvas to work on. When the canvas was dry I put on some clear contact, you can use any contact that you like. Um, I liked this one because it's quite tacky and it sticks onto the, um, the acrylic paint well and when you remove it it doesn't remove any of the paint. After I stick the contact down um, I always go around the, the edges, the cut edge and smooth it down with either my fingernail or um, or a credit card or some something similar to that, something that's a bit hard and I can really um, close those edges up. It's important to do that otherwise you're going to have um, paint leaching out or leaking out onto the um, the canvas on the on the side that you don't want. Oh, here I'm just showing you this, like I said, this canvas is quite old and this is something that I did years ago where I've just used some, um, some textured paint just to um, put a bit of a decoration up the side of it. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually going over those edges, um, again just with the same black acrylic paint. I paint one coat on and then I let it dry and then I always do a second coat that just really seals the edges so that when you actually pull the contact off um, it's a really crisp beautiful edge. What I'm doing here is um, just mixing up my colours and I'll put the colours in the comments box. Um, down below and I've just poured Floetrol in and um, you can see I've got it on um, high speed here just so you don't have to sit through watching me stir these up. This colour that I'm stirring here is actually a high flow um, that's why it looks a little bit runnier than the other colours. Um, I do put some water into the um, the umber and the the gold paint, which is either end, and also the the white, which is in the big red cup at the end, um, just to thin it out so that it's about the same consistency as the high flow in the center. It's important to mix the water in well. And the mixing um, can take a little while just because you need to make sure that it's mixed in evenly and well. The next thing that I'll be adding is a couple of drops of silicon. So I just put two drops um, in each of the colours. And you'll notice that I'm really mixing these paints up very well with the silicon in it because I want for the effect I'm going for which is a flea bitten grey for this um, Arabian horse I need to have lots and lots of little cells coming through rather than large cells so that's why I'm really mixing the, um, the silicon in well So this is the same paint that I used um, initially to
cover the canvas or just give the canvas a, um, a base coat. You can see that the, the canvas um, has got a lot of ridges and, and paint build up um, on it. But once you put the pour or the um, layers of paint over the top, um, you can't see any of that. So the reason why I'm using these colours for the flea bitten grey is because they actually do have, well some of them, ours do anyway, they have um, these beautiful um, browns and some sort of goldy tint to them sometimes on their um, little spots that they have. And they're absolutely beautiful so that's why I've um, put those colours in as well as obviously the black and the white. So I'm pouring the black on here which is going to be the well which is the muzzle part of the the horse and you'll notice that I go over this several times because I kept getting annoyed with how it was turning out it wasn't actually turning out how I had imagined it to turn out um, and it didn't really matter to me how many times I went over it because I can just add some more paint so I wasn't too fussed at all um, if it didn't work out the first time the the more that the colors blended the better anyway really so um, it, it ended up giving quite a good effect at the end which you'll see um, and being such a big canvas um, it's nearly a metre by a metre I've really had to stretch over the top of it and um, it just made things a little bit more difficult but that's the fun of it <laughs> So you can see some large cells starting to develop there um, and that isn't what I want. I want lots of tiny cells. You can see some of the smaller cells starting to come through. Um, here I'm just making the tail. Um, the actual design is the, um, the horse is looking back over its back. So that's why you can see the tail up on that other side. So the part that I'm doing here is the sweeping neck and then going to the ears and then that the muzzle down the bottom. You always have to worry that you're overworking your painting but I just was not happy with the effects that I was getting and the the, the, the way the colours were um, were blending was not very pleasing so that's why I've gone over. I'm actually, this is the first time I've done this where I've actually pushed quite hard like with um, some firm pressure on, um, on that edge but then when I wipe back over the top of it it just gave a really nice effect so I was quite happy with how that all turned out in a moment I'll grab the heat gun and um, you'll actually see the the smaller cells pop pop up as I go over the top of it Okay, so here's the heat gun coming over and as I swipe over you can see the little tiny, tiny cells popping up which is exactly what I wanted. Because um, that's how these horses look. And we're quite lucky our studios 
um, they're actually on our Arabian horse stud on Brykuma so I get to have a look at all of <laughs> our beautiful horses every single day and um, just absolutely love them so that's where the inspiration comes from you'll see in some of my other paintings lots of little birds and wildlife and all of those things we find here on our property so um, we're quite lucky really to have it all in our backyard large backyard so now I'm finished I'm happy I think I'm happy and um, now I need to let it dry <coughs> so now it's dry there's little Bentley the little our little studio manager having a bit of a look around down the bottom there um, so now what I'm doing is I will be removing the um, the contact now this has dried for two days um, and some sections of it was still even a little bit tacky but um, I thought it was dry enough to actually pull off or reveal anyway but you'll see when I pull it off how crisp the edges actually are here it comes again because the canvas is so big um, it just makes it a little bit difficult but you can see quite clearly how um, clean the edges are, edges are with the contact and that's because I, I paint over it a couple of times and let the, the layers dry before I actually do the swipe. And here I'm trying to, I'm thinking I've made a mistake here but then I realise I've still got that extra little bit of contact there that I didn't pull up so here I am pulling that up now and it reveals the horse now I wasn't happy with just the plain black background um, so what I actually did was I um, painted a background in behind the horse um, and you'll see it in these photos here it's just of a golden umber mixed with the black um, that's actually in our patreon video um, how I've done that so if you'd like to become a patron you'll be able to see that um, and then I've painted in over the top of the textured areas with the gold and the bee for our stud brokuma so i hope you've enjoyed watching the video and um, if you'd like to learn any of these techniques you can jump onto patreon um, and see them on patreon or you can book online and visit us here at the studios and um, and have a, a a lesson here Thanks for watching and hope you're having a wonderful day. Bye.